preserved for our walk in this world. They resound with... Welcome to Dear Lover of God. I pray that as you're watching these, you are sincerely one who loves God. And as you're watching these, I would think that you are one who wants to do and wants to be in love with God and wants to do what he says. Luke writes to Theophilus, who is the lover of God, whomever that might be, whether an individual, a group of people, or you and I at this point. As he writes, he's introducing us to Jesus and the mission and the ministry of Jesus and who Jesus is about. We're going to meet Mary and Martha today. In Luke's account, I think this is the first time we we see them in their reaction and their actions with Jesus. Well, let's jump into the text in Luke chapter 10, at verse 38. Luke chapter 10, verse 38. Now, as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. You know the scene. As we've read it, you can see it in your, your mind's eye. Mary and Martha have invited Jesus into their house. And Jesus is talking, and, and, and maybe he's talking about things of the kingdom. Maybe he's talking about the importance of, of different things of God. And Mary is hanging on every word. She's sitting at his feet. She's listening. She's learning. Martha is, is doing what would be expected. She's getting ready the meal. They have, have, after all, invited this man, this rabbi, into their home. So it's only right that she does the things that society and tradition have taught her that she's supposed to do. Jesus does not say to Martha, what you're doing is wrong. But let's look at what happens. Martha is so focused on the physical things of life that she is forgetting the spiritual side of life. And I think what Jesus is saying is, Martha, yes, this is good. And, and what you're doing, it's, it's, it's nice and it's caring. But what's really important are the things of God. Are you focused on the things of God? We get so wrapped up as individuals, as adults, as parents, and helping our children be successful in the world. And that's good. To help them prepare to, to have a good life so they don't go through necessarily go through the struggles that, that their parents and grandparents did. And, and that's admirable. But if we're not focusing them on Jesus, if they're not focusing on Jesus, if we're not focusing on Jesus in our own lives, We're missing what's important, what's necessary. Where is your focus? And you can only answer for you. You can only answer for your children when they're at home. You can only answer for you. Where is your focus? Let's go to God in prayer. Dear God, we thank you for love. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your grace. And Father, as we understand your grace, your forgiveness, help that to help us to renounce all the things that are wrong, the things that are worldly and ungodly. Help us to put on those things that are right and to do those things which are true. Father, be with everyone who's listening. Help them, help us all to stay focused on what is truly necessary 
And Father, even for those who are not listening, who have wandered away from you, Father, please help them to come back to what is necessary, what is you. Father, forgive us and thank you for that forgiveness when we fall short. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you again for joining us today as we've spent time as lovers of God looking at Luke's account of the life of Christ. I do look forward to these. I look forward to our time together again. Until then, may God bless your day. Yeah.